Hi, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening. This is Jeff Fassett, president of Various Graphics International, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to the webinar. Um, we have some more folks uh, still joining, so uh, I'm just going to do a quick, a quick intro. Um, but it's great to see so many folks on here. We have customers, partners, um, LED uh, uh, supplier partners, dealers and distributors, um, Spike customers, uh, both here in the U.S. and and internationally. So thanks for uh, spending an hour with us. I know that uh, that everyone's busy. Um, so as a introduction, I'll be um, giving a few brief comments here, and then we'll we'll turn it over to Glenn Chambers, uh, who is the business development manager for Ike GPS, and uh, he'll give you an introduction to Spike and uh, show you how images um, in the field are captured and uh, processed. Um, then Glenn will pass it back to me, and I'll show you uh, how to create an LED layout from from the file that that he's working with. Um, and then we'll leave some time at the end to address your questions. So please um, ask questions using the GoToWebinar interface, and then um, Glenn and I will answer them at the end of the session. So I'm excited to uh, to get this opportunity to show you um, how LED Wizard and Spike work together. Um, you know, I think it's a great solution for our customers. Um, especially uh, regarding the challenge of retrofits, which is a lot of what we'll focus on today. So um, without further ado, uh, I'm going to get uh, Glenn on the line. Glenn, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Perfect, I can. <clears throat> All right, great. Well, I hope everybody's doing well today. As Jeff mentioned, I'm Glenn Chambers. I'm with Ike GPS, the, uh, the makers of Spike. I'm the, uh, the business development manager here. And uh, we're very, very excited to uh, get this thing rolling with uh, the integration of Spike and LED Wizard. So we got a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation. We're going to be showing everyone. And then I'm going to hop into a, uh, a demo, show you how Spike works on the mobile app along with the cloud. So let's, uh, let's get started here. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Glenn Chambers. We also have Jeff Fassett on the line here. Um, we're going to be your host for the, uh, the webinar today. So... If you guys have any questions, shoot them in that chat box on the, uh, the GoToWebinar uh, control panel there, and we'll uh, address all the questions at the end of the, uh, the presentation here. A little bit of the agenda today, we're going to talk about Spike, you know, how Spike benefits Spike sign shops and how they're using Spike. Um, we're going to also do a live demo, and then Jeff's going to jump in and show you guys how this integration is working with LED Wizard. It's, it's phenomenal, the, uh, the workflow ease that we're we're doing here. Um, you guys are going to really, really appreciate what we've accomplished. And then Jeff's also going to get you that demo as well. And then we'll save some time at the end for some questions and answers. So introducing Spike. I know some of you have heard of Spike. Some of you have not. Um, we've been at ISA since uh, 2014. Um, in 2016, we brought home the most innovation. Oh, excuse me, the most innovative product of the year award. We're very proud of that. Um, so it's really, really beneficial to the, the sign industry and now uh, for all the LED wizard users as well. A little bit about our Spike product overview. You're going to have to use your smartphone or tablet. Use our Spike device. We now have three Spike models. We have our clamp, our, our tablet version, and now we have an OtterBox version as well. You download our application via the, IO, or the App Store on your Apple device or the um, Google Play Store if you're using Android. So it supports both platforms. And now we have the capabilities of importing directly into LED Wizard. And we also work with Adobe Illustrator, um, Flexi, and Corel as well. So Spike is an initial site survey estimation, and it's also the design tool. Um, you know, that's kind of where the, uh, the integration comes with LED Wizard using our scaled image that I'll show you here later on in the, uh, the demonstration. So with, Sky, or with Spike, you're able to capture dimensions for new signs, sign replacements, LED retrofits, cabinet signs, if you're replacing those old ancient uh, fluorescent lights with some LEDs, it's going to be a phenomenal tool for that. So when you're doing your survey, Spike is literally cutting your time in less than, you know, as you can see here, from 45 minutes to literally one minute, because all you have to do is you have to hop out, 
snap that photo and you're literally done with your survey. You can take dimensions in the field, you can upload them to our cloud, you can take them back at your office. It's a very, very quick tool and it's saving you all that upfront cost and wheels turning on bucket trucks, boom trucks for you know jobs you haven't been awarded and such. And using LED Wizard, you're going to be able to crank out those LED retrofits and you know new sign builds as well um, to get those LED quotes much much faster. So you can measure when and how you want. As I mentioned, from the Spike app or the Spike cloud, you're going to take the initial photo. You're going to capture your first photo with Spike attached to your mobile device, whether you're using that tablet or that smartphone. And as I mentioned, you can measure from the app or you can measure from the desktop whenever you want. Uh, say you have a survey and the customer is not ready to do anything with the, uh, the design or the LED retrofit you still have that on the cloud. So you can pull that out and reference it, you know, one day or one day later or three months later, whenever you want from your desktop or the app. One site visit for all your measurements. Oops, sorry. We don't want any more emails popping up there. Sorry, I thought I closed that already. One site visit for all your measurements. Access that photo at any time to remeasure or view measurements in the field or at the office. This is great. So. A lot of times in the sign industry, we'll go out and we'll do a set of channel letters or we'll do a, a larger sign job and then that client will come back and say, hey, you know, do you guys do window vinyls or, you know, hey, I'd like to add some LEDs to uh, an existing sign out there. You can always go back and reference that photo for additional measurements so you're not making that second trip to the site. And this is, uh, this is our new scaled image. This is our new... Um, feature that we have to our cloud. So this, this feature is only available on the cloud. So what you're going to do, and this is what works with LED Wizard, Plexi, Corel, Adobe Illustrator, so you're still going to have to snap that spike photo, and that's literally all you have to do. And then from our, our cloud, you, you go in and you do your alignment, and I'll show you the alignment here in our demonstration as well. Um, you click on download, and you'll see three images. You have your measurements, your image only, and now you have your scaled beta image. Um, we're still in beta form. This image is exactly the way we want it to be. We're just waiting for a few months to do a full release. Um, going to try and maybe get some of it. You can see that we got those crop lines in the uh, in the corners. We're trying to get some some of that stuff figured out. So maybe I'll do an auto crop, something like that. But you also have other export formulas such as PDF. A URL is very useful for multiple Spike Cloud users. That allows you to share Spike photos in between uh, multiple Spike Cloud accounts. So this is a little snapshot of our um, cloud. So as you can see, we're literally standing on the ground. We're not using any equipment here. We're using our Spike device to capture this image. You can pull those measurements in real time right there on the site if you have your client sitting there with you, or you can do them back at your office. So Jeff is going to get into this part here. This is what it looks like inside of LED Wizard. As you can see, this is a very, very useful tool when you're estimating how many LED modules are going to go into your retrofit or cabinet sign. It's going to figure everything for you. And I cannot express how useful this is going to be when you're creating quotes for LEDs. So while we get this question quite a bit, the, the accuracy of spikes. So spikes accuracy is a plus minus 1% margin of error. So that's why it's that initial site survey tool. A lot of times it's even better than that if you're kind of within our optimal range. And our minimum is we want you to be a minimum of six feet back. Um, you know, usually it's within 20 feet back. Uh, the optimal is always going to be straight on, but no more than 60 degrees. So you're still going to be sitting comfortably within a 60 degree angle, you're going to still get that accuracy that you need to create a quote. Um, a lot of our customers say, you know, they're going even further back. They're going up to 80 feet back. We've had people say they've, you know, been 160 feet back and they're still getting that accuracy. So it, our accuracy is very, very good. Um, usually the measurements are always going to be within one to two inches. If they're not, you know, there's usually something else going on, whether the, the, uh, the crosshairs weren't pointed directly at the object you're trying to measure, or um, a lot of times we'll have a, a client call in and say, hey, my spikes aren't working, and we'll troubleshoot it, and their, uh, their spike laser is pointing in the clouds. So it really, really works. It's, it's a phenomenal tool, um, and it, 
I mean, really, how does it compare to, you know, using a ladder or sending out that bucket truck or pounding bricks and even worse, you know, guessing? We have a lot of uh, city sign inspectors hopping on board with Spike now because they're not even licensed to uh, go out on a ladder. So they, they find a huge, tremendous amount of benefit in using Spike for verifying all the, uh, the permit applications and whatnot. So a little bit on how sign companies are using Spike. You can use Spike for literally any type of sign out there, pylons, channel letters, monuments, new location, custom signs, windows, you know, a couple, I like to call them the three golden rules to, uh, to use in Spike. Spike is a laser range finder, so if you point it directly at a window, it's going to go through that window and hit the object from behind it. So just always make sure you're on a solid surface. It's going to create that plus minus 1% margin of error accuracy. Um, and then the same plane dependency. You know, if you have a setback, you know, just grab a multiple spike photos. Just make sure you're pointing the spike laser at the object of interest that you want to measure. So how spikes used in the sign in, in the in the excuse me in the sign and graphics industry. Uh, you know, I'm a 15-year sign veteran myself. I've been in the industry since high school. It's really all I know. I hopped in. I hopped on board with uh, Ike GPS about a year ago because uh, I really found the true benefit in Spike. I'm like, hey, you know, the industry really, really, really is thirsty for a, a, a tool like this. And ever since, Spike has just been blowing up in the sign industry. So in this case, this is actually one of my permits here. I'm from Colorado Springs. So this is a permit application here in Colorado Springs. In this case, I was actually measuring the setback for this um, freestanding sign. So your quick site surveys, we, we invented the term to drive by. You know, you literally have to, all you have to do is pull up, roll down your window, snap that spike photo, and you're off to your next survey or to meet with your next client. It is really that easy. It's also a phenomenal customer engagement tool. I mean, you're really showing your clients that you're on the cutting edge of the technology industry, showing them that, you know, I can get this quote to you. I can get this design to you much quicker than the competitor because, you know, they're out using their tape measure. They don't even have their survey done, and you've already uploaded it to your cloud, whether you're sending it to your designer or your estimator for that LED quote. Using our cloud, you can have that stuff in real time. So, like I said, you can be off to your next survey. Your estimator's already got his file. He's creating the quote using LED Wizard for that LED retrofit. And, of course, your installation teams are going to be able to use Spike for that final survey, you can measure, you know, the distance between your sign and your electrical feed. You know, if you're replacing the sign altogether, you can let the, uh, your installers know, hey, you're going to need to bring this much conduit on site with you to install this sign if you have a, a master electrician inside of your, your sign company. And then at the office, you're going to be preparing those estimates and quotes much, much faster, using that photo to create the mock-up for the sign. Um, and for the LED wizard application as well, it's much, much easier. I uh, include that photo measurements in the permit application like we were just talking about. You can measure frontages, you can measure windows, doors, fascias, uh, existing sign cabinets, existing channel letters, and include all those measurements within that permit application. So it's a great tool for permits. And then your repeat customers, like I already talked about, you're not making that second trip. You have a customer who wants more signage, just pull up that spike photo and pull the measurements off of there. So here are some of the top benefits for set spike. Typically, the ROI on spike is anywhere within three to five uses. We've heard a lot of feedback where it's actually within two uses because, you know, anytime those wheels turn on a boom truck or a bucket truck, it costs a lot of money, you know, average between $100 and $200 um, every time those wheels turn. You're going to be increasing that revenue by taking on more complex bids. You know, you're going to be out there slamming through your surveys much, much quicker. Saving time, reducing the measurements from time, from days and hours to literally minutes. It's, it's really that much quicker. Faster quotes by turning around those bids literally less than a day. Uh, you know, and it really is dependent on the workflow or what you guys have going on in your, your sign shop as well. Um, professionalism bringing that value to your customers, you're increasing the customer confidence and you're standing out from the competitors showing, you know, hey, you know, we're, we're using Spike. If you, if you want access to these measurements, you can share a PDF file with them. They're going to have that for their record as well. A lot of times it's cutting that cost by more than 50%, you know, by measuring without that expensive equipment and labor, such as your boom trucks, uh, your bucket trucks, uh, if you want to call it a cherry picker, whatever you want. Um, 
So very, very valuable tool. Uh, and by all means, feel free to check out our website. We have a lot of customer success stories on there, some good case studies. Like in this case, this is Ryan from the, uh, he's a branch manager at Yesco in St. George, Utah. He's a huge Spike user. Check it out. It's all there on our website uh, for you to read. So now we're going to hop into a demo here. So I've already downloaded the application here. So I've already attached the Spike device. In this case, I'm using my smartphone. So once that Spike device is connected, you just open up our application. You're going to connect to your device. Usually it'll connect automatically, but in this case, I had to go in and just manually connect. Not a big deal here. So as you can see, we're looking at a sign that's pretty high up in a building, something that would definitely, definitely take, um, that would take a boom truck or a bucket truck to get up there and get these measurements for you. So all you do is you aim your spike device directly at the object you want to measure. And from there it goes down into your camera on that bottom right hand screen. So I'm just going to click on that. And this is a very, very, very important step. This is how the integration with uh, LED Wizard works. This is the alignment tool. And what we're doing here is we're setting perspective or setting angle in the photo. So our application can adjust the measurements accordingly to that perspective in the photograph. So really it just takes a good square, a good rectangle. As soon as you have that done, you can go ahead and hit next. And then you're ready to start taking your measurements. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time here because we really want to show you how this works inside of LED Wizard. So as you can see, you can do all the measurements in the application. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lock that rectangle ratio. That's one of our newer features there. But you can see it's giving you your overall height, your overall length, your square footage. It's all there at your fingertips inside of our mobile application. And then the most important part is uh, once you save this, and again, you don't even need to do any of this. You literally just have to take that photograph in the field. So once you've taken that photo, you're going to upload to cloud. As you can see on the bottom portion of this uh, pop-up tab here. So as soon as you upload that to our cloud, it's going to be sitting on your desktop computer. I'm going to hop into our cloud demo here. So this is our cloud. You're going to, just, you're going to have to create a username and password. It's very, very simple. You just use an um, email address and set up whatever password you like. So as soon as you log in, you should have all your photographs here. And in this case, we're going to go with this photo right here, the one I just snapped, and upload it to the cloud. So this is that alignment rectangle. Very, very important part of the software integration with LED Wizard. So again, I'm going to use this same window here. I'm going to line it up with this window. And as you can see up in the top right-hand corner, you get those zoomed-in sections. So you can really, really dial in on the corner so you really get good accuracy with this alignment rectangle. So as soon as you're done with that, you're going to click Save, and now you can hop over into your measurements. And this is where you can do the measurements on the cloud software. In this case, I'll just make a square here. Not going to spend a whole lot of time here. So you can see you can do measurements. It's going to give you all the same features as the application. And uh, just one more quick thing. I mentioned the permit part. You can use this length tool. So if you wanted to measure this frontage, it's a one-line measurement. So you just click point A to point B, and it's going to give you that distance reading really, really useful for applying for a permit. So now we're going to hop into the, the report, and this is where the, the new feature lives, where the integration comes with LED Wizard. This is really, really important. So once you click on report, you can click on download, and as you can see, you have your measurements, your image only, and your scaled image like you saw in the presentation. This scaled image is not only scaled, but it's automatically de-skewed. So we've taken all angle, all perspective out of this photo. So in this case, it's 100% perpendicular, zero angle. So once you bring it into any of your design software, such as LED Wizard, it's ready to use, ready for design. All you do is click on it, click download, and file import or click and drag, however you choose to do it. Now we're going to hop back over to Jeff here and let him take over and show you how it's working with uh, LED Wizard. All right, Glenn, that's great. So um, what, what I'm going to do now in LED Wizard is um, actually import that X ledger file. And I'll show you how um, in LED Wizard that we would, um, we would use that file to, to make the layout. And, you know, we chose this particular file because, um, you know, it, it's going to let me show some features in LED Wizard that, uh, that maybe you haven't used 
if you're one of our users or, or you aren't aware of. Um, and you know, we always talk about the importance of, of getting vector artwork um, for LED Wizard, and and so this is um, an example of how to handle a file. Obviously, that's that's not vector art, um, and, and rarely do you have vector art with uh, with a retrofit. Um, you know, this scaled and de-skewed spike file, as, as Glenn mentioned, um, is really the next best thing to a vector file. Uh, it's it's ready to go in LED Wizard in terms of being able to uh, match the font and and draw shapes and things like that. So. Um, what I'll do in this demo for LED Wizard is, is show um, font matching using our text editing tools. Um, I'll draw a shape, we'll do some vector editing um, and, and show the inlining tool that we'll use that for the border. And then um, just real quick, simple on-screen digitizing to draw a quick shape and, and use our mirroring tools to, uh, to finish that, that X logo. Um, and we'll also talk about image transparency, which is uh, which is a really nice tool that we have in LED Wizard for helping us uh, sort of see what's going on with that image. Um, and then we'll move into tools that you you are familiar with if you're an LED Wizard user: auto population, power flow tools, uh, power supply, stats, title block. That'll be um, you know obviously we'll we'll go ahead and finish the layout and do the layout on the um, on the X ledger file. So I'll go ahead and and import this file. And this is um, um, you know, the file that Glenn was just working with. And um, of course, this being a bitmap, we cannot um, use our import crop tool. So we just import um, the entire bitmap in here. And you know, one of the first things that you realize is, yeah, this is a full scale file. Right? This is not a, a tiny bitmap that we have to figure out, OK, what's the scale? Um, this is exactly the full scale. Um, so the, the first thing that I would do um, is, is crop the bitmap, because certainly we don't need the entire picture. Um, so we have a bitmap. I'll just go to the crop tool. I just draw my crop box like this and press enter. Um, and, and this is really all we need, right? So I can bring this down. Yeah, let me just um, increase my layout size. So this is, um, this is the full scale file. And, and one of the things that um, Glenn was mentioning, you know, this is a, um, you know, this is a completely um, clean file, square file. I, I've got my, my baseline here for the text that goes all the way across and it's, um, you know, it lines up perfectly. So um, uh, the first thing that I, or the next thing that I want to do is um, go ahead and measure the height of this. And I'm going to measure the, um, the L here using our measure tool and just start down here at the baseline and just go up here and um, so this this is 30 basically 32 inches um, so that is the the size of text um, that I'll enter to uh, to match up on the X, X ledger so I'll go to our text tool and type the text in and um, make the size 32 inches And I've already determined that this font is Arial, um, which um, was was not a real difficult uh, uh, determination to make. Um, it could also be uh, Helvetica or similar, um, you know, thin strokes and serif font. Um, and so you you can see when I when I match this on here that my um, my kerning is a little bit off. And so we have our um, our easy uh, kerning button here. And, and this bottom right control point allows me to adjust the kerning. It doesn't match up exactly, um, but we do have individual letter kerning, as you probably know. So each one of these little points um, allows me to adjust the, the individual letter kerning. And um, you know, on a case like this, on a retrofit, um, I would say it's rare to get it to be uh, perfect or, or super precise. Um, I think certainly what we're doing here is um, um, is very good and, and will be fine for um, you know for creating an estimate um, so so I would simply just adjust that kerning get these guys lined up and um, um, I know that I'm matching up on the height and the width um, I mentioned that we can adjust to transparency and so when I when I have the bitmap selected I have this transparency button right so just by putting my mouse wheel in here you know I can just kind of um, fade this out a little bit 
And I can also um, turn the color off of my object just by clicking on the X here. Um, I'm in color mode, but I'm clicking on the X to turn the color off. Um, and so that just kind of lets me see a little bit um, um, behind here. And I, and I think that's a pretty good match. So, uh, you know, I would say that's, that's kind of the easy part. And, and now we have this, this shape here. And it's, you know, it's not practical really to consider vectorizing this, right? I, I mean, we could try it, but I, um, in general, when you're shooting uh, uh, these kind of retrofits, you have return, you know, you have shadows and patterns and things like that. So um, in this case, for, I'll do the border first, and I'm just going to draw a shape um, using our rectangle tool. And I'm going to line this up here and draw it down here. And then to, to handle the corner, uh, I'll switch into vector edit mode. And just uh, double click brings up this little menu, right? Insert a point there. Insert a point here. Delete that point by drawing a box around it. Switching this to an arc. And just fitting the arc. Okay, so... Um, if you haven't used these kind of vector editing tools um, in, in the LED Wizard, they're very easy. Um, insert, insert. In this case, this is actually the start endpoint. So I can't delete that one. I have to move it to this point. So I set start end. Now I can delete that point. And here I use the shortcut key A to uh, change that to an arc, um, one of the many shortcut keys that are available in, in LED Wizard. So now I've, I've drawn this outside shape, and um, I'm not sure if it's, if it's perfect, but it's certainly um, accurate enough. I actually might be able to adjust that out a little bit. So instead of drawing a, uh, another shape and doing what I just did, uh, I don't have to do that. I can use inline, um, and inline is, um, uh, is a terrific tool. And all I do is, in this case, put my mouse wheel um, either on the value or the percentage, and I'm just uh, scaling it down. And I'm just matching up to that, um, to that second line there. And I do uh, combine, and I don't want to leave the original. I want to combine the two together. Okay, and so that's, that's my new shape. I do want to change the, um, get the loops to be correct. So this red is the, in, the inside loop in this case. Um, so that when I populate, it just populates inside there. Okay, so that's pretty easy. And, and the, the final step here is this um, X logo here. And I want to use uh, the on-screen digitizing tools. And again, if you haven't used these, um, it's, it's very easy. It also uses this little pop-up menu. So I click and I say start. And then I go here and I click on line. And you'll notice that W is the shortcut key. So I go here, line, and if I want to do W, I just position the mouse where I want it and press W, and it inserts the line. When they get down here, I hold Shift, and then that'll connect it. So um, I can make adjustments if I need to. Um, zoom in. Oops, let me get out of back to regular vector edit mode so I can bring that down. Okay, so that's pretty good. And that'll be my um, the beginning of, of my shape for the X. Now again, I, I don't have to do that four times. Um, I only have to do that once because I can mirror copy this. So um, I will do D for duplicate and then go to the arrange menu and say horizontal mirror and then position this one. I could use guidelines um, to be a little bit more precise. Um, I don't have to do that. Then I will group these two together doing shift click D for duplicate, and then now this time vertical mirror, and then I position this here. So that's, um, the mirror tools are great in a case like this where you have some kind of a symmetrical style logo, and um, I'll do shift click with this one. So now I have that as one group, and I'll actually combine that together because um, I want that as, as one object, okay? So here in a couple minutes, I, I've been able to, uh, to match the font and, uh, and create this shape. And so at this point, I'm ready just to, to go straight into PowerFlow and, and get on with, um, with laying it out with LEDs. So in terms of uh, uh, what we do with the spike file and everything, that's, uh, you know, that's a lot of what I, what I just did. Um, 
you know, if you compared this with the process of um, working from from someone's cell phone pointing up, uh, trying to figure out measurements and things like that, being able to, to design straight on the bitmap in full scale with it all squared up is, is just a terrific tool. Um, so I'll go ahead and go into PowerFlow and, and I think this part will be um, again more familiar in a little bit. Uh, I'll just kind of go through this pretty quickly. So um, of course in, in LED Wizard we have um, a very large list of LED suppliers and um, in this case I'm using uh, XYZ which is our um, internal sort of fictitious LED brand and um, I'm using a module called Standard Cool White Double and I'm just going to say pop all sim and it's going to create the layout and of course um, we'll go back and, uh, and take a look at a couple edits on that in a second. Um, I want to do the border with the same product and this is um, you know, it's a very easy layout right there and then again here on the um, inside I just went back to the layout tools so that I could more easily select um, this here and because of the stroke, to maintain a consistent brightness level, I'm going to go ahead and do this as two runs. And um, say I make my clearance uh, two inches, that looks pretty even. Okay, so there's my layout for the inside. Let me just get rid of this guy here. Um, and then, uh, you know, in terms of, of editing of, of this layout, um, you know, just real quickly um, show a couple things. So I'm going to have this um, go across the middle here. I'm going to use our some shortcut keys. So I, I switch that to a line and um, insert it and, and respaced. Um, those all look fine. So here in the D, and you're used to uh, you know, doing a little bit of this kind of editing if if you're an LED wizard user and um, you know, this is, in this case, this is, um, you know, pretty pretty easy editing. Um, I don't know that I'll be changing uh, the module count very much, but just to clean this up a little bit. And if, if you know me, you know that I like to uh, make sure that all this stuff is, uh, is nice and perfect. So I'm just going to bring this guy down a little bit and connect that. Okay, so that's, whoops, one more here. Just maybe one more module up there. Respace that, I don't think we need this one. So that would be, that would be my, my basic layout. I don't think there's anything that has to happen over here. Um, so that's the layout, and of course I have my um, modules per square foot readings up here. And I also um, um, have the labels, and I wanna go ahead and just combine this into one. I'm going to name this X and name this order. So I'm just clicking on the label here and it allows me to, to change the label. Um, and that'll come in um, when I do the stats. That'll be important to show what those objects are. Um, so the next, next step here is to uh, go ahead and load these with power supplies. So I'll select uh, this logo as one and I'm going to use this XYZ 120 uh, watt power supply. And I'm going to say uh, one for all letters on this one, 75% load, perfect. And then select this text and do the same thing. And that comes in here at 88%. Okay. So I'll just put these guys out here to the side and, uh, and then generate the stats. And so the, the stat objects come down um, right below the layout and I can uh, scale these and space these out. So, um, you know, similar to some of the data that, um, that Glenn was mentioning that, that Spike provides, um, you know, we provide, in this case, the, the number of modules, the watts. Uh, this is a, a one watt per module. Um, so I get 18 uh, watts. We have uh, modules per square foot reading, and then the area and the perimeter feet um, of, each, of each letter. And then all this is um, is rolled up to our totals. So I have 197 modules, and uh, and two power supplies with my area and and perimeter. Um, and and then our final step here is to merge. And this um, uh, 
brings in our title block template. And um, I realize that this example template is different from the one that, uh, that Glenn had in his slides, but it's just an example template. So you can put logos and uh, additional job information, legal disclaimers, this sort of thing. Um, and um, so this is, this is our final file. And um, again, we can adjust transparency of this depending on how, how you want to show this. Um, you know, I think if, if you think about a retrofit, um, um, most of the retrofits that, uh, that come across my desk at least are, are uh, challenging to say the least in terms of um, there is no clean artwork, it's a lot of guesstimates. Um, but if I'm a customer and I'm looking at this, and I see, well, there's, you know, there's my existing sign. It's uh, the new LEDs are superimposed right on top. It's very accurate. It's very precise. Um, I'm thinking this is, uh, you know, this is something that um, that I have trust in, that I can be confident that this is correct. So, that is um, that is the the workflow, and um, um, I know that we'll be in a position here to to take some questions. Um, you know, I, I, we have a lot of customers now that are using this spike device and using it with LED Wizard. So I hope that through this this video and this demonstration that you'll you'll see how they work together, and uh, and you'll see some of the tools that um, that are available in LED Wizard to to make this process a little bit easier. Um, so Glenn, um, do we have any? Are you still on the line, Glenn? Do we have any questions? Uh, you know, I, I'm not seeing any questions on the uh, the chat box as of right now. Um, but yeah, Jeff, thank you a ton for this presentation. This is phenomenal. It really Absolutely. It blows my mind how far, you know, the sign industry has come, you know, technology-wise. Um, are you seeing any right. questions on your end? Um, yeah, I see one regarding, regarding file format. So, um, with... With LED Wizard, you know what we're importing here is, um, you know, is this scaled and, and de-skewed bitmap. Um, we, in terms of bitmaps, we can also import uh, just a regular JPEG, um, a PSD file, um, a TIFF file, um, uh, a PNG. We can also import, and then of course, standard vector files um, would include PDF, um, EPS, AI. Um, DXF. So, um, and keep in mind that PDF is a format that will um, support bitmaps and vectors. So, in some cases, um, you know, you might have a PDF that um, um, turns out to only be a bitmap, and you think that you had vector artwork, and it turns out that you just have a bitmap. So, um, you can certainly use some of the same tools um, as what I just went over to um, create a vector version from that bitmap. Um, and, and again, if you have a bitmap that, that's clean enough, then you can simply use our vectorizing tools. And, and if, if you have a clean bitmap like that, you can use vectorize, then um, you, know, you wouldn't have to go through uh, you know, the on-screen digitizing, for example, that we, that we just did. Yep, it looks like uh, we have one question as to, you know, what uh, devices are compatible with Spike. You mm -hmm. know, we, we try to support the mass majority of the tablets and smartphones out there. There's a few lower end um, models that are not supported by Spike, but we have, a, we have all that stuff on our website as well. So you can go in and check out our website and see the list of supported devices. Now, most of, or actually all of the iPhones, I think it's, six and up are supported, um, the Galaxy S8, you know, like I said, we support a huge amount of the d tablets and smartphones out there. Um, you know, so check out our website, it's full of useful information. Um, and then Jeff, if you want to switch the, uh, the screen share over to me, I can uh, tell them about how to, you know, purchase Spike and get set sure. up with it as well. All right, absolutely. So this is how you purchase Spike. The cost of Spike retails for $4.99. Uh, we are running a, a, a webinar special. Um, all the software is included in our mobile app and cloud at no additional costs. Uh, we give you some time to take you know, Spike for a test drive. So we offer you a 30-day money-back guarantee, giving you time to test out Spike on several of your surveys. Um, you know, Spike is sure to be a, a good fit for any sign shop out there. It's, it really is a, a a must-have tool for any of the sign guides. 
Uh, so that special offer I was just talking about, um, it's a $50 discount on Spike. It's through September 30th. Uh, and all you got to do is use that discount that you see down there at the, uh, in that paragraph there, LED Wizard 17. You can purchase uh, Spike at shopikegps.com. Uh, you can just go to our website, click on Spike, and you'll see Buy Spike right there in the tab. And if anybody has any questions at all, you know, reach out to me or Jeff. Uh, we're both more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, you got my email there. Um, let's see if Jeff can share this presentation with everybody that joined the, um, the webinar today. And then you got my phone number there, too. I'm more than happy to pick up the phone and answer any questions for you guys as well. Sure, Glenn. And I, I wanted to mention, too, that um, I know a couple of folks joined late or had trouble joining. So um, we will be making this available. We'll, uh, we're recording the, the webinar, so we'll put this um, in the appropriate spot so, so that everybody can watch it. And um, regarding purchasing of, of LED Wizard, uh, please just contact me directly. Um, here's my, my email and my phone number. And in terms of pricing, we can offer a discount. Um, I know a lot of folks on here are already customers, um, in which case we can talk about multi-site licenses and that sort of thing. So, um, um, you know, reach out to me and, and just express that you've, you've seen the webinar and, and you're interested in, um, in LED Wizard and Spike integration. So are, are there any, any final questions? Okay, well, I think we're good. We, we finished a little bit early and, and that's good. You know, the, uh, the workflow here is pretty straightforward and uh, there's no reason to take any more time than, um, than the process actually takes. Um, so if you have any questions, please uh, reach out to, to myself or to Glenn and, um, and we look forward to, uh, to working with you in the future. Glenn, any final, final comments? Uh, no, you know, I, I'm really excited about this integration, Jeff. I, I know it's going to be a, a great deal of, uh, you know, time savings and, you know, workflow process. You know, we're here to help you guys out in the sign industry. So by all means, reach out to us with uh, any, any questions. Absolutely. You know, there is, there is one more question. So um, the, the question has to do with, um, with fonts and, and matching fonts. And, um, you know, the, the font challenge is, is ever present in this industry. And, and this example, uh, you know, I think was, was an easy match. Um, but when, uh, you know, when you're in LED Wizard, um, all of the fonts that you have loaded on your system, your, your true type fonts um, are available in the software. Um, there, there are websites that will match fonts. Uh, and, you know, we're pretty good at, at fonts here, so you can always ask us, uh, hey, do you guys know what this font is? Um, there's there's a website called uh, What the Font, um, and and you can do other Google searches for uh, for font matching websites and things. Um, you know, a lot of times for channel letters, these are these are fonts that um, you know that we would recognize. And um, I think uh, uh, for a retrofit like this, uh, perhaps it doesn't have to be a 100% perfect match. Certainly, the layout that I created would be would be accurate for 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 this example. Um, but there are there are font resources, and, um, and and we have access to a lot of fonts as well. So certainly, uh, you know, I think you want to try to match the font in the way that I did with the text tool, um, as opposed to trying to you know on screen digitize, for example, an entire an entire letter set. I think that would be um, that would be time consuming. So that's um, you know those are some some things to think about relating to fonts. Great, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I remember back in the uh, back when I was designing signs, it was uh, it was always a competition to see who could match that font first. <laughs> right, right, yeah, no, exactly. So, Glenn, there's one more question about um, about a spike adapter, and I'm not sure um, the nature of this question. Um, is there is there such thing as a spike adapter? So we have our three versions. There's not necessarily an adapter. I'm going to go ahead and assume that they're referring to they have the tablet version, and they're asking if they can get the clamp for their tablet version. Unfortunately, the uh, the internal mechanisms of the spike devices do not support a, a, an attachment for the tablet version. Um, that's why we created the smartphone, the tablet, and now the OtterBox version. The OtterBox version, um, I do need to note, is um, Apple-specific. So if you have um, an iPad and a, an iPhone, it's very handy because you can actually, it's the only spike device that you can switch from tablet to smartphone. Or if you're mm -hmm. using Android and stuff like that, you'd have to use the tablet for a, an Android tablet and a smartphone for an Android smartphone. 
Yeah, I, I would add to that that what we did with our spike is we, we bought a, uh, for the tablet, we bought a case, um, just a, a very simple case, and then we mounted um, the spike device onto the case. So when we use it, we use that case, and if we, uh, if we don't, then we switch to a different case, and, and for us, that worked well. Okay, well, I guess, I guess that's it for questions. So um, thank you, everyone. Glenn, thank you. And um, if you have any other questions, then please reach out to us, and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everyone.